Hey everyone, welcome back to Under Hero. We've beaten the game, but there are a few more things that I need to do. For one thing, let's go ahead and check out some of those new tunes that I picked up as a result of beating the game. Yeah, this is the music from Puzzle Man's World, where there wasn't a whole lot of noise. Yeah, this one is by far my favorite. And yeah, those are applied to every save file once you've beaten the game. So you can listen to them since you can't really save after going to the point of no return. Meanwhile... We didn't end up killing any of the masked kids as we went through, so let's go ahead and just do that. Alright, so, so these kids are able to parry. And I haven't really fought them, so I don't know what their timing is quite, but that works. Alright, I think I've got it. And they don't always parry just because you've given them the opportunity to do it. Still, it's going to be a lot safer overall just using the sword when I can. They can dodge, too. And that was before I got aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and expend my rush mode. It's not going to do me a whole lot of good to sit on it for a long time, and this way I get something out of it, and it'll build back up again before I need it. It's going to take me a while to get the timing right on those parries. If you're not capable of parrying, these fights are going to be way too difficult. And they don't really give you a whole lot of experience either. That's 10 points. And that's for a full-on victory. That's not even bribing them and getting half the experience. You're really not meant to fight them, as far as I can tell. You're not going to get a level here. I expect the fight becomes a lot easier if you do manage to destroy the shield but it's kind of unreliable. So there was 
was not even any wind up there. He just punched. This is getting ridiculous. Well, that was interesting. I actually managed to hit her right through the shield, it looked like. Admittedly, there's a bit of a gamble in using the hammer, because that gives them time to recover and potentially parry. But on the other hand, I can wipe them out in one hammer and one sword attack, so that seems like the most sensible way to go. Unfortunately, recovering after taking a parry is not all that hard. Actually, it looks like just one hammer attack is enough. That's alright, I'll send you someplace quiet. Back to the lab. By which I mean death. skip ahead a bit. There were a lot of kids underwater here. Like, lots and lots of them. And honestly, there, there are a bunch of rooms with lots of kids, and then several rooms with no kids at all. And as I'm playing through the game again, yeah, I start to notice the game is just always like that. cluster of times when you have to do a lot of fighting, and then a cluster of times when you don't have to fight a lot at all. Yeah, this is the part where I gotta start the elevator so I can get through the spikes. I know how to swim. Now I'm just learning how to fight. So I'm not sure whether those free attacks they do are meant to be some kind of counter to something, or if they can just randomly punch you for free anytime they want. Hey, look, I don't have to deal with the pounders up above! Alright, I don't know what was that camera angle. shield now. Only problem is that as I try to hit him, he's just punching me over and over. 
Alright, well it took some work, but I finally got past. And here's another section where we got some masked kids to fight. This is the part where you could take the high road and then go through the secret passage in the wall. Yeah, I don't think this kid is going to attack until I attack first. So, I have to take the first swing before I can attempt to parry and counter. There are a lot of masked kids here. Looks like the other one just stops moving entirely while the fight is taking place, which is fortunate. Yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot you can really do when they counter your first attack. You can't provoke an attack from them without making that attack. So you really just got to be able to mash that jump button and recover. A bold pronouncement, to be sure. I always have to wonder why all the minions are always so confident. You know, if I were a minion in some evil organization, I'm sure I would just run away whenever the hero came close. Cause, like, the hero has defeated 50 other enemies exactly as strong as me. What difference is it going to make if I fight them? Yeah, here's another interesting thing that just occurred to me. You know, Princess Cereza identifies our masked kid by calling him or her or them green boots. All the masked kids have green boots, except for Cereza, who's got a different color outfit. I don't know, that, that just seems a little weird, putting too much thought into it. I guess if I were to put less thought into it, I'd enjoy things more. Yeah, here's where you're supposed to go and get Brono to help you blow out all the candles. I'm certainly not going to do that. I can just fight my way through. brings to mind another weird thing about morality systems and games, just in general. And, you know, it stands out here, but... You also get this kind of thing in games like Infamous, where the game basically encourages you to either always do the good thing or always do the evil thing. There's no point to mixing and matching, because you're just going to reduce your own overall power. But then you'll approach a choice like this one, where, you know, clearly I'm going through and killing all the masked kids. I think this is the one that I already fought. 
just accidentally. Last time I just paid him off, this time I'm gonna have to kill him. But, you know, I'm here. I've decided to fight the masked kids. That's clear. And yet, the game is still telling me, well, if you don't want to fight them, this is what you're gonna have to do. You know, what gives you the impression that I even care? Okay, that's that's disgusting and rude. You're gonna have to die just for that. Well, that was embarrassing. Wow. A shield so strong, I can't even destroy it in one hammer attack. I guess this is where they put all the really strong minions. But they're still only worth 10 XP. Don't worry, friend. You'll have relief from the heat soon enough going to a very cold place. At least I assume so. Alright, uh, the money thing will happen in another life, I'm sure. Right now, I'm an equal opportunity killer. Everybody dies. See, this one's at least sensible. I feel bad about killing this one. But I've come this far. And there we go. That's the final cassette tape in the game. I finally get the trophy for having all of the cassette tapes. And at last, Heroes Road. All of the masked kids are dead. Only one final challenge remains. And a lot of tough memories. But alright, let's go ahead and indulge Puzzle Man this time. We know what answers he wants to hear, even though we now know that they are, in fact, lies, and he's been building us up so that he could lie to us this final moment. The previous evil king was Queen Reyna. And Stitch has killed her. That much we know is true. And we know he wants us to say Stitches became king because he's truly evil.
And here, the world ends is the only answer he won't accept. At this point, the money doesn't really mean a whole lot. Nothing's changed for the hero, so let's jump ahead to the Mr. Stitches fight. And the fight proceeds exactly the way it did before. The only other change is after we've defeated Stitches for the second time. So this time the masked kids don't show up, it's just Tiber himself. And I'm actually mashing the attack button, but I can't do anything to change this ending. It's still the same.
So finally, what is the cassette that we got for actually fighting the masked kids? Here we go. Yeah, it's that messed up Puzzle Man theme from the final chapter. And that's it! Nothing about the end of the game or anything in the journal changes as a result of me having killed all of the masked kids. So with that, I'll see you next time when I start the pacifist run of Underhero.